Welcome to this week's sermon summary, this time on the book of Romans. I have no idea how well I'm going to be able to summarize the book of Romans. Um, some well-known preachers have spent decades just trying to make their way through this. Um, there's so much in the book of Romans to preach on. I could, for instance, talk about the confusing verses, uh, these ones that have confounded theologians over the years, uh, Romans chapter 8, the whole issue of predestination, or Romans 7, the fact that the Apostle Paul says he, there's evil living in him, doing stuff which he doesn't want to do. Um, we could be a little bit gentler and talk rather about the inspirational verses, things like, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God uh, that brings salvation to everyone, or I guess uh, Romans chapter 8, the spirit that we've received doesn't make us slaves so that we live in fear again. Rather, it's the spirit that, that brought about our adoption uh, to sonship. And, and, and by the spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. I mean, that would make a great series of sermons. Um, but then there's also the choice of some of these foundational verses, which we all should know the fact that we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Um, I could spend a whole lot of time talking about the definition of sin, that it's actually just falling short of God's glory um, and that the wages of sin is, is death. Uh, we could spend months delving into the depths of, of the doctrinal verses like, like Romans eleven thirty six, for from him and through him and for him are all things. Uh, I mean, that, uh, I think a couple of hundred years into eternity, we'll still be trying to get to the depths of that verse. And then there's these misunderstood verses like Romans 8.37. Um, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And I think I've already preached a couple of sermons on this verse. You could, you could get, get them on our, on our website. Um, but just to say here that, that being more than a conqueror doesn't mean that you are greater than the other conquerors, uh, perhaps it means something more along the lines of, I am more than a pastor of a church. I, I have a more important role. I am a husband. Uh, and, and perhaps what Paul was saying in this verse, which finds itself sandwiched between persecution and enduring hardship, perhaps what he's saying is we are more than conquerors, we are endurers. Uh, perhaps that's what the verse means. If, if that's the case, it's been really misunderstood uh, for the last couple of decades. Um, or, I guess, looking at the book of Romans, I could spend time talking about Paul. This could be a biographical message about an incredible servant of God. I, I mean, look at this. His, his ministry started in, in AD 37. Uh, for 30 years, he, he ministered as an apostle. He wrote more than what, half of what we have is our New Testament. And, and there's a ton of stuff which is inspirational, encouraging, uh, motivational, inspiring, uh, if just from the life of Paul. But, but as I look at Paul's life, the question that jumps out to me is, how on earth did he do all of this? How did he do this? As, as I was reading through the, the letter that he wrote to the church at Rome, I... I was still undecided when I got to Romans chapter 16, the final chapter, and um, I guess that's where we're going to spend a bit of our time, is having a look at these names. What can we learn from a list of names? So read this with me. Um, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a deacon in the church at Sancria. Welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people. Now, this might not sound strange to, to you or I, but in Paul's time, for him to be saying, I want you to welcome a woman because she's worthy of honor, culturally, that was a huge issue. He says, help her in whatever she needs, for she's been helpful to many, especially to me. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, Hmm, interesting that uh, he doesn't say Aquila and Priscilla, which culturally is, is the norm for the culture in which I find myself. The man's name is usually mentioned first. But Paul says, no, no, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in the ministry of Christ Jesus. In fact, they once risked their lives for me. I'm thankful to them. 
and so are all the Gentile churches. Also, give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. Greet my dear friend, Epenetus. He was the first person from the province of Asia to become a follower of Christ. Give my greetings to Mary, who has worked so hard for your benefit. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews, who were, with, who were in prison with me. They are highly respected among the apostles. Mm, another bit of a confusing phrase that comes in there because that could mean that the apostles highly respect these two people, Andronicus and Junior, or it could mean that they were apostles themselves. Um, let's not get into that, but what I will point out is that the name is Junia, not Junio. In other words, this is another female who was highly respected either among the apostles or by the apostles. And they became followers of Christ before I did. And so, yeah, Paul's showing his respect for these two uh, followers, these two workers, these two servants of Christ who have served Jesus longer than what he did. Greet Ampliatus, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my dear friend, St friend Stachys. Greet Apelles, a good man who, who Christ approves. And give my greetings to the believers from the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Interesting. Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet the Lord's people from the household of Narcissus. Give my greetings to Tryphena and Tryphosa, the Lord's workers. And, and to dear Persis, who has worked so hard for the Lord. Greet Rufus, whom the Lord picked out to be his very own. Rufus's name is mentioned uh, in another place in the Bible, uh, and Rufus's father is known as Simon of Cyrene. That name should ring a bell because he was the man who carried Jesus' cross. Uh, the Roman centurions and soldiers, when Jesus couldn't carry his cross, they picked on this man, Simon from Cyrene. And, and he carried the cross of Jesus. And so if he is the father of, of this Rufus that Paul is referring to, that means that carrying the cross had such an impact on this man from Cyrene that his family uh, are still serving the Lord when Paul writes the letter to the church at Rome. I mean, that's just, that's incredible stuff. And then his dear mother, who has been a mother to me. So, so the whole family uh, served Jesus from this encounter that Simon had uh, when Jesus was on his way to uh, Golgotha. Give my greetings, verse 14, to Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobas, and Hermas, and the brothers and sisters who meet with them. Give their greetings to Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and to Olympus, and to all the believers who meet with them. Greet each other in Christian love. All the churches of Christ send you their greetings. And so if I'm asking the question, how did Paul get to achieve so much in the name of God, for God, in, in 30 years? Well, I think one of the, the keys found in this, this list of names is the fact that Paul got over his issues. Paul got over his issues. You know, more than 29 names are mentioned. And as you can see from my, my red highlighting, um, nine of those names were women. Paul being a Pharisee, he would have grown up, or as a Pharisee, he would have been taught to pray this prayer every day when he woke up. God, thank you that I am not a Gentile, and thank you that I am not a woman. Now, that's, that's very serious, but the point is Paul, by God's grace, was able to work through those issues. Um, sexism, he, he got to the place where he could describe women as being worthy of honor and, and even being appreciated and respected among the apostles. Um, nine of the 29 names mentioned are women. Paul dealt with that issue. Not only did he deal with that issue, but... He, he was able to deal with racial issues as well because of these names. Some of them are Romans, some of them are Greeks. There's even Africans that, that are mentioned here. Paul was able to deal with cultural biases. You know, if, if you and I are wanting to, to have any kind of serious impact in the world for God and by His grace, we're going to need to deal with our issues too. And, and not only were there... 
uh, gender issues that, that Paul dealt with and, and cultural issues, but there's also socioeconomic issues here as well because there's, there's very uh, rich people that are mentioned. I'm uh, going to read that in the next, next few verses that follow, but then there's also people who, who were extremely poor. And Paul was able to deal with all of those issues. And that's one of the reasons why Paul was so successful. Let, let's carry on reading. Um, I think one of the, the other issues or one of the other points which enabled Paul to be so successful is the fact that he was living for a purpose. Not only did he deal with these issues, but he, he had a purpose. In verse 17, it says, And now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. Stay away from them. Such people are not serving Christ our Lord. They, they're serving their own personal interests. By smooth talk and glowing words, they, they deceive innocent people. But everyone knows that you are obedient to the Lord. This makes me very happy. I want you to be wise in doing right and to stay innocent of any wrong. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, sends you his greetings, as do Lucius, Jason, and Sosipater, my, my fellow Jews. I, Tertius, the one writing this letter for Paul, send my greetings too, as one of the Lord's followers. Gaius says hello to you. Now, I just want to stop you with all these greetings. Take note of the kind of relationship that, that Paul had with these people. In, in the verses previous, I've, I've highlighted in, in green uh, text the amount of times he says, my dear friend, my dear friends, give my greetings. Uh, these people send their greetings to you as well. Uh, even the, the, the person who was taking the dictation from Paul. He, he got so caught up in the emotion of this that he, he, he can't hold himself back. He says, hey, I'm sending you my greetings too. That's the other reason why Paul was able to be successful. He had close relationships with the people that he was ministering to. And then in verse uh, 23, as, as we, where we stopped off, Gaius says hello to you. He is my host and he also serves as a host to the whole church. Erastus, the city treasurer, possibly one of the most wealthy men around at the time. He's part of the church. Erastus, the city treasurer, sends you his greetings, and so does our brother Cortus. Now, all glory to God. Here's the third reason. All glory to God. You see, Paul was living for a purpose. Number one, he got over his issues. Number two, he, he had close friends. Number three, he was living for a purpose which was higher than his own. I think it's John Maxwell who says, a man who, who, who is a self-made man who lives only for himself. You know, a self-made man makes a very small package. Um, Paul was living for a purpose higher than himself. All glory to God who is able to make you strong, just as my good news says. This message about Jesus Christ has revealed his plan for you Gentiles. A plan kept secret from the beginning of time. But now, as the prophets foretold and as the eternal God has commanded, this message is made known to all Gentiles everywhere, so that they too may believe and obey him. All glory to the only wise God through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. If you and I want to live lives that are not only fulfilling, but we, we, we actually are actually doing what God has called us to do, if we want to achieve the dreams and the vision that God has for us, we can learn from Paul. Let's get over our issues. Let's surround ourselves with close friends and let's work for a purpose that is higher than our own. To God be the glory. Amen.